hip hop, hip hop, yeah. hip hop, hip hop, bars is back, hip hop, Sam hip and hop, oh god. Pop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side. And you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. See, let's transition back to Nick Cannon because that was his original comments. I think who was he on? Who was he on with? Was it uh, Professor Griff. Professor Griffey was on there with? Caught a lot of backlash. Apologized. Then he on Cannon class, he had different rabbis and things like that. Now we're hearing that Nick Cannon may be back on Viacom. We just did a report on that a couple moments ago prior to this interview. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Nick Cannon going back now to Viacom, possibly, potentially. You know, brother, man, I was blessed to meet Nick Cannon uh, July 4th at the farm of Minister Farrakhan. Oh, wow. And it was the first time that I had met Nick Cannon. And I want to say that, you know, I was always impressed with him as a young man who had become very successful in a very difficult town. And so I respected him for his ability to maneuver and be successful in Hollywood. But when I got a chance to meet him and speak with him briefly and follow this situation, my respect for him has grown because I see that he's not just a funny man. He's not just a song and dance man. He's not just a great MC. You know, the brother has depth. The brother is a substantive young man. And so if he can get back on Viacom, you know, I didn't realize that Wild and Out was like, a business that has grossed over a billion dollars in yeah. revenue. Yeah. So, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people in, in, in the black community, you know, was like upset because, you know, it's like he was apologizing, apologizing, apologizing. And of course, you know, we don't want really want to see him do that. But I focus more on the fact that he was being forced to do that. He was being intimidated mm -hmm. to do that. And the brand that he built was being held hostage. And so, man, at the end of the day, I want my brother to get what he earned, man. I want him to get his brand back. I want his good name to be restored again. Because you punish a man for speaking the truth as he understands it. Well, you say you disagree. Okay, fine. Sit down and dialogue. Yeah. Let him bring what he is basing his opinion on to the table. You bring what you're basing your opinion on to the table. And that's dialogue. That's what civilized people do. And since in America, we have a constitutional right to free speech. I heard Minister Farrakhan say this one time, brother. He said that the right to free speech is what has kept peace in America. He said, because in a lot of countries, you can't criticize the king. You can't speak out against the prime minister. And in those countries, you see there's always a coup. There's always a revolt because people who dissent against the government feel like they have to go underground. They can't be public with it. But in America, you can be public even if you disagree with the president. So people are able to air their di dissenting views and peace is maintained because we have freedom of expression. These people now are moving us toward a draconian society where you got to be careful what you say, even if you believe it's the truth. So I, I want my brother to get back everything that he deserves and then some. Awesome. Powerful. Um, just, just a few more questions, man. We definitely appreciate you coming on the Absolutely. platform, you know, tonight. Um, would you say in your opinion, you talked about, you know, the Jewish people on their role in slavery. Would you say that, you know, um, Jewish people got to their position of power more so through um, slavery and conquest or a do for self type of attitude. We know about how the dollar circulates to the community. We know how they, you know, tend to do business with each other. Which one would you say how Jewish people got the power in America and in the world as well? You know, uh, there's a great book called The Jewish Phenomenon written by a member of the Jewish community, Mr. Steven Silbiger. 
Okay. And, and it's a great book because he begins to explain some of the Jewish keys to success. And, you know, these are keys that we should adopt as a people. You know, Minister Farrakhan one time said, you know, a Jew, to be called the Jew is a good name. He said, because a Jew is a person that if they are really that, they are in a covenant relationship with God, following the example of God's prophets and their teachings. So though that community that are sincere about that, we see that they practice certain principles of group economics. They have wisdom. Mr. Seer Bigger talked about especially how they share knowledge with each other. And I, I really liked when he talked about that because, you know, sometimes we all bear witness like you all got getting started building your brand, building your podcast, right? So now you may have run to some brothers, some OGs in that field, asking them for knowledge, for help. Some probably was willing and free hearted and shared with you everything that they knew. And there was others who may have been fearful or intimidated by you feeling that, man, if I tell them what I know, they're going to become bigger than me. So I ain't going to tell them nothing. And we kind of have that sometime in our community. But Mr. Seal Bigger was talking about in the Jewish community. If this brother here know how to get a discount on shoes or on clothing or fabric or wholesale goods, he's going to make sure everybody else in his circle have that knowledge. So through sharing knowledge and if knowledge is power, they are multiplying their power in a community. And they think as a group where in the black community, we have in a very negative sense, kind of bought into this false idea of rugged individualism. See, we are trained in a way and we think that, man, I'm going to make it on my own. Here's a news flash. Nobody makes it on their own. Yeah. Everybody that's successful has help. But we have been, we kind of have a crabs in a barrel mentality. That's, that's not how we naturally are, but that's kind of what, sl what slavery and our experience in America did to us psychologically where we we don't feel that we should work together as a group like the jews do like the asians do like even the africans do mm -hmm. you know if you go into major cities brother they have what they call jew town chinatown korea town sometimes you go and they have little africa a little haiti mm -hmm. and all it is 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 that immigrants who have come together they work together they play together, they worship together, they share their resources. And before you know it, and this is key because we're in election season. I wrote an essay back in uh, when the last election was called the no show paradox. Right. And what it was about was about looking at the immigrant communities who they don't place a lot of emphasis on voting. They don't really show up at the poll. They are no show on election day. However, they get more from the American economy and more from politicians than we do, who many of us are shamed and beat over the head about voting. And we told our ancestors died to vote. No, our ancestors died to get freedom. Our ancestors died to have liberation, not so they could choose the lesser of two evils. Mm. You know? So there are a lot of principles that the Jews have and other communities have that Minister Farrakhan and Malcolm X and Dr. King and other strong leaders have been trying to get our people to do for a long time, but we got a lot of work to do. Very powerful. We appreciate oh, yeah. your time, Mr. Muhammad. Can you please let the people know if they want to um, hear from you further or where they can hear from you further if they're, if they're interested? Yes, sir, my brother. I, I'm, I'm kind of on, on all the social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and I have a website called researchminister.com where we have published a series of books. Our latest book, which is something uh, we might want to come back and talk about, is called Didn't Y'all Kill Malcolm? No doubt. Busting the Propaganda Against the Nation of Islam, because that's always a subject that never goes anywhere, the idea that the nation killed Brother Malcolm. Yeah. So yeah, I about that, definitely. We would love to come on and talk about that book. There's a lot of explosive research in that. That's uh, the first book in 55 years since Brother Malcolm was assassinated that has come 
as an official work from the Nation of Islam on that subject. So we're very proud of that. And you can see our other books uh, as well there, researchminister.com and also on amazon.com. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity, brothers, to come on with you all, man. Y'all keep up the good work. We're Thank proud you. of what you all are doing and you're very needed uh, because mainstream media is contracting and, and only allowing certain perspectives to see the light of day. And it creates a false sense of reality as though there's as though everybody believes and feels the way folk feel in the mainstream. And so you all do a wonderful job of allowing uh, those other voices to be heard. So I appreciate y'all letting us be heard tonight. 